Welcome back to Good Morning Interbike. I'm David, your host, and we are now joined by Steve McCallion. He's the president of Chrome Industry. Steve, welcome to Good oh. Morning Interbike. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to see you. Yeah. Um, I, I want to talk, before we get into product or your booth or anything like that, I just want to talk a little bit about the founding of the company. Sure. Give everybody an, an idea of, of, wh of where Chrome came from, and I think something we were just talking about I think people would be surprised at how long Chrome's yeah, been around. Absolutely, yeah. Chrome's been around for 17 years. Wow. Yeah, not many uh, kind of brands in our space can can say that. Yeah, that's true. You know, and and as we discussed, it was founded because we couldn't find gear that was uh, meeting our needs. It wasn't durable enough. It wasn't functional enough. And so we decided we had to start making stuff uh, for ourselves. And that's how the whole uh, the whole concept started. And so, what was the first product that Chrome introduced? Well, we made, there are a bunch of products, a bunch of misfires, a bunch of mistakes, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the, the real product, I think, that uh, every brand has in its, its iconic moment. I think our iconic moment was when we were making a messenger bag and we needed a quick release uh, kind of mechanism on it so you can slip it over your head without taking your helmet off. Yeah. And we didn't have money to do tooling and we couldn't figure out, you know, how to get that money. It would cost a couple hundred thousand dollars to do tooling. We had that, we, there was no money like that at Chrome in those days. And um, we had to come up with a solution. So. We had the idea to go to the junkyard and cut seatbelt buckles out of cars and use those to make uh, messenger bags. And so that was the moment that I think that the, the brand was kind of the iconic aspect of the brand was born through resourcefulness, yep. you know, the value of resourcefulness, the value of creativity uh, and all that. And so I think that's, that was kind of a defining moment for the brand. And that, you talk about iconic, I mean that, that icon oh, yeah. of, the, of the, the belt buckle, yeah. the seatbelt buckle, it, it, it lives today it in does. your products still. It does, and it does, and it's, it, it lives physically in our products, but also it lives from a value standpoint, like a values standpoint. So like I said, the value that, that uh, drove us to that solution was being resourceful, being creative, coming up with innovative solutions, and that's really, those values are really what we carry forward. We still make the buckle bag, it's still a very popular bag of yeah. ours, and we continue to breathe life into that, but we're also bringing that way of thinking into uh, our footwear and our apparel, uh, and extending it out into other bags as well. So, I mean, you mentioned footwear and apparel. I think a lot of people think of Chrome right, as right. a bag company. Right, right, I mean, yeah. you've got a really wide range of products now, don't sure. you? Sure, absolutely, so, absolutely. So, what are you showing today that I think may, may surprise some people? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people have known that, I mean, we've been doing uh, apparel from the very beginning, yeah. right? And we've been doing footwear for four years. And, uh, and we're really excited at the show today to be launching uh, waterproof uh, urban bike sneakers. And so these are sneakers that are ideal for, if you're a messenger, they work for you. If you're a commuter, they work for you. But you can ride through puddles, you can ride through all that kind of stuff, get spray up on your feet, and they won't get wet. And so we're pretty stoked about that. Nice. When, when you consider your, uh, your primary customer, and, and not, I'm not talking about consumers now, right. but the retail channel. Right, right. Is it the bike retailer, the independent bike dealer that, that, that you're going for? Yeah, we have a we have a, a wide range of, of channels that we sell through, but the yeah. bike channel, the the independent dealer, is is a primary channel of ours, and uh, we believe in that channel, and we think that it's a it's the op opportunity for that channel is huge, um, in the same way that skate was 30 years ago. You used to go into a skate shop 30 years ago, and you saw decks, wheels, trucks, yeah, and bearings, right? Yeah. And you had to put your board together. Yep. And it was a scary place to go into. You had to figure it out on your own and all that. You go in a skate shop today. And some places, sometimes it's hard to find a deck, yeah. you know, and, and any, any of that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we think that, that the opportunity for bike, specifically around the, the category of urban bike, has a huge opportunity to grow into that space where you see an equal balance at least between soft goods, accessories, and hard goods. Is that a missed opportunity or, or perhaps opportunity for you? But for a lot of bike dealers, is it still you really need to start considering urban, you need to start considering utility, because it's just another way for you to bring customers in and to find some revenue out of right. your shop. Absolutely, Yeah. absolutely, and sometimes they're the same customers. The guy who's riding on Saturdays and Sundays and in spandex and racing is commuting sure. you know, to work on a regular basis. I think what we see and we're really excited about is that you know, a shift in, in thinking and, and at least acceptance of bike as utility, right, bike as fun bike as commute, bike as, you know, what the messengers have been using it for for a long time. Yeah. But it broadens out to a broader audience of people. In Europe, it's already accepted that bike is utility, and it works that way. In the U.S., it, it has been very focused on sport and, and uh, recreation, 
for some time, and those are important categories. What we're excited about is this new category that's emerging. We think it's an incremental opportunity you know, for dealers to get into that category, the urban bike category. Absolutely. You were talking about footwear earlier, yep. and, and we talked a little bit about your urban SPD line. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so we're really excited about, uh, we have a new, uh, a new shoe we're launching. We started uh, our, sh our footwear line with Urban SPD about three years ago. Uh -huh. That was with our truck. And the idea behind it is one shoe you can wear all day. You can commute in it, clip into your SPDs, get to work, wear it all day, it's comfortable enough to wear all day, and you get back on your bike and ride home. And, and one of the problems, right, with, with a traditional SPD shoe right. is it's got that stiff sole. Exactly. And now you, you, to, if you're going to go from your bike to your work, that you walk that. isn't always comfortable? That's right, yeah. that's right. So what we're doing is we're balancing performance on the bike with performance off the bike and in all of our gear. That's a universal. And so we have a dual durometer plate that we call flex plate technology. It's a new technology we developed. And it has a stiff durometer all the way up to the SPD, a little bit past the SPD. And then on the toe, it has a more flexible durometer so you can actually get toe roll, yeah. so it's not like you're walking on, on stiff boards. I mean, I never thought of it, I, I never knew it was called toe roll, but yeah. I know exactly, exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. Because I know that if I'm wearing my traditional SPD shoes, yep. it's not incredibly comfortable for a long walk. Right, that so makes your choice right now is either wear mountain bike shoes, and it looks like you came down from the mountains, right? right? Or you wear, you know, kind of road shoes, but at that point you're wearing the looks and stuff like that, and you're slipping around trying to get into uh, Whole Foods to <laughs> get your there, salad and Thank all you. that. Yes, yes exactly. I know exactly what you're exactly. talking about. What else is new for this year? What else are you showing here at Interbike? Well, we're really excited about, again, extending the urban utility theme out to and beyond our, our core demographic, which has been messengers in the past, into a category that uh, in, it, we believe is under, underserved right now, which is the commute category. Yeah. We're seeing huge initiatives in cities around the world, San Francisco, Portland, New York, Chicago, all these cities are, are pushing people to commute more. And so we're seeing a, a big trend around that, front basket, you know, kind of carrying, kind of off body carrying, all that kind of stuff. And so we have a new line of welded transport bags okay. that these things are uh, have the waterproof performance of a very technical bag, but they have a touch and a feel of a canvas bag. Oh, nice, so you don't right. get that rubbery kind exactly. of, Exactly, yeah. exactly, and that's really, again, what we're looking for, we're looking for solutions that work on the bike, work in the office, work in the bar, back on the bike, hopefully after not too many drinks, and then back home. And, and, it, and it really sounds like from talking to you and, and from knowing your line, that it's, that f while fashion is important because you want it to look good, right. that it really seems like it's function first. Absolutely, yeah. everything with us starts with utility, usefulness, you know, and, and is it solving a problem? You know, if we start with that, we believe that uh, what we make will be, uh, it'll work. I mean, it works for us. And also, we test everything that we, that we do. I've had these, uh, these uh, trucks on uh, for six months, yeah. the, our new uh, pedal series, and I've been riding them, wear testing them for six months. All right, the, the uppers are 25 times stronger than canvas. I've been putting them in toe clips day in, day out. There's no wear on them at all. Nice. And so that's kind of, that's the way we live. We live the products that we make and uh, we'll continue to do so. Makes sense. Now, here at Interbike, you're in the Urban Yard, if I'm not mistaken. We are in the Urban Yard, yes. So people, go check them out there yeah, at the yeah, Urban Yard. Yeah. What are some of the fun things that you guys are doing here at the show? Oh man, we've got a lot of stuff going on in the Urban Yard. We got custom tees, so uh, Little Tuffy is, uh, manages a bar in uh, San Francisco called Pops Kay. Bar. Every year he has a tricycle race, <laughs> right? Right, yep, and, and July 4th. And so uh, we convinced him to uh, do a tricycle race t-shirt uh, for nice. Las Vegas and uh, you, you can uh, draw your own conclusions about when the race will be and where it will be, but <laughs> yeah. we, will, we will be announcing a tricycle race at some point. Excellent. Uh, we've got an arm wrestling tournament tonight with uh, throwdowns. Uh, my understanding is that we've got a Shimano SRAM throwdown already. Nice. See, yes, the battle of componentry. <laughs> and, uh, so everybody's getting ready to rumble in the corner. Getting ready to rumble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Campy will be in the corner drinking scotch and smoking a Absolutely, cigarette watching. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then we also have a custom bag uh, sewers there where you get uh, first 10 people, we're doing 10 a day, and we also have some pre-made ones, um, but 10 custom bags a day. Nice. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on there. And so people have to get early to your booth in order to get their custom bag. Absolutely, Good. and we've got uh, happy hour uh, there starting at uh, three o'clock. Three o'clock happy hour, and we'll have uh, some good deals going on at that point. Really, really nice. Yeah. What, what, is, what does Interbike mean to your brand? Um, how, how does this show help you get your message across, help you grow your market? Uh, yeah, well, Interbike's been great to Chrome. It's been a great relationship. Good. And, and uh, it's been very solid. And, and we've worked together to help um, build the category of urban bike. 
you know, and we've been working very closely with them over the last few years to really put definition around that so the dealers can see this category is real, it's emerging, that it's not just about, you know, kind of guy, crazy guys bombing streets in San Francisco, that it is also about commute and utility, it is also about fixed gear freestyle and doing tricks, yeah. it is also about racing, right? It's all of those categories. And so uh, Interbike's been really great to work with as a partner to, to help build that category. We can't do it on our own, we need sure. some help. Yeah, so. that's great. Steve, tell everybody where they can find you online if they're not here at the show. You can find us online at uh, chromeindustries.com. Excellent. And uh, you can follow us on Instagram at uh, chrome underscore industries. Uh, at, or at Chrome underscore Industries. Follow us there. That's yeah. excellent. Well, yeah. it's a pleasure spending time with you it's and hearing menu. a little bit more about Chrome. And, Absolutely. And we'll, we'll come find you over at the Urban Yard. Right I want to see who happy wins, hour whether for it's sure. Ceram or Spot. Well, certainly for happy hour. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Great to talk yeah, to you. That's Steve right Kellyan. He's the president of Chrome Industries. And we're going to be back with the folks from SRAM here on Good Morning Intervite.